It indeed is a privilege to be before you once more on this Lord's Day. If you would like to be turning to the book of Daniel, chapter 3, we'll be referencing that chapter and be reading a few verses from it this afternoon. Given that we didn't have as many singers or lead singers as we had normally, I guess now is a good time to redeem the time. <laughs> Lesson shouldn't be that long. I try to keep in mind a little bit of history for these short devotionals. That way we could reach back into human history and then make some type of application to us today. Well, a co-worker of mine introduced a, a Swedish heavy metal band to my, my knowing, and I've actually grown fond of them. They're called Sabaton, which is interesting in and of itself because that, that's a piece of armor that covers the foot. Well, they've been known, in fact, it's the focus of most of their songs and even their albums to to sing about different military battles, different military victories. Um, they've spent a, a good deal of time dealing with World War II. So a few moments I'd like to reference one of their songs. You see, they wrote a song about the, fi the Russian 588th Regiment it was a night bomber regiment during World War II. What's different about this particular regiment, it was all women. Well, during World War II, women were barred from serving in the war. But Major Marina Roskova was able to obtain permission from the Soviet leader, Joseph Stalin, to allow these women to actually serve in combat. Uh, this occurred in October 8th of 1941. So she formed the, as we said, the 588th Night Bomber Regiment of all women. These were all volunteers. They ranged from late teens to early 20s in age. Well, being that they were women, they were looked down upon. They were mocked. They were given trash to work with. They were given old men or men's old uniforms. For their planes to fly, they were given wooden frame canvas covered training planes from World War I. So that's the type of things they were dealing with. And they were still considered very successful in their missions. Their goal was to be night bombers so they would attack at night. They were concerned with disorienting the Nazis and having them sleep deprived, which was the reason for attacking at night, keep them on their toes. Well, having this occur, the way they attacked, they would attack with three planes. And since these were older planes, they had real small engines. But as they approached their target, they would turn the engines off and glide over their target. Well, since these planes were made of canvas, they made a whooshing noise that sounded supposedly like a witch's broom. Well, they would drop their bombs, but before the bombs hit, these Nazi soldiers heard women cackling, which earned them the name Der Nachtexen, Der Nachtexen, which is night witches. The night witches are coming. So they, these women would fly over at night. They'd drop their bombs, destroy these Nazi barracks, turn their engines back on and fly back to base, reload, refuel, and if they had no other missions to, to carry out, they would do that. But as such... That was the best they, they, were called, they were called night witches because they, the Nazis didn't really have an explanation for them. They found out later that they were being bombed by women. You can guess what kind of a blow to their ego that was. 
But I find that song very fascinating. Um, as many of their songs are, they look at battles and victories and sometimes losses that we kind of lose in history we don't really hear about. This is one of them. Dead knocked Exxon. Well, all that being said, they, these women did what they chose to do out of service to their country. They did what they could with what they had. And they did it with the best of their ability. And history does recognize them. There are several women that served in this regiment. And it later was renamed, I think, the 46th Tamman Bomber Regiment. I, I don't recall that correctly, but history does honor them. Well, in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, we have mention of three Hebrew boys that did something similar. They did what they needed to with what they had at the time. In Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, we're not going to read all these verses, though we will reference them. We're told that King Nebuchadnezzar builds this giant golden image because after having the dreams he had, his natural response was to build an idol out of it. Either way, he did that. He built a giant golden image. And from that point forward, he had made decrees that once the music plays, all these different instruments play, you are to fall down before this image and worship it when it passed by. And if anyone was to refuse falling down and worshiping this idol, they would be punished. The punishment was being cast into a fiery furnace. We see that just like nowadays, there, there were tattletales back then. Chapter 3, verses 7 through 12, that it was told to the king that, you know, there's three Hebrew boys that didn't obey your decree. When this image came by, when the music played, they didn't fall down and worship this idol. In verses 13 through 15, they're questioned by Nebuchadnezzar to, fig to figure out whether or not these things were sold. I mean, they at least had that going for them. They at least had a, a fair trial, if you will. And then Daniel 3, verses 16 through 18, which we will read, says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So you see that the tattletale's record was true. They did not bow down and worship this golden image. And they very boldly yet respectfully proclaimed that to King Nebuchadnezzar. So they gave their defense. And this is our common link between the night witches and the three Hebrew boys. We see their intense desire to serve. These boys had their goal clearly in hand, in mind. They were going to serve God and not these false gods of the Babylonians. And neither would they serve this golden image as it passed by. In the following verses, verses 19 through 27 were given that their punishment was, was applied. They were cast into this fiery furnace, so much so that even the people who were stoking it caught fire. And then later on, we see their salvation. They were released from this fiery furnace, and they came out so clean they didn't even smell like smoke. You're around a fire, and in a few minutes, you're going to smell like mesquite smoke or hickory smoke, whatever they're burning in that brush fire or the bonfire. These boys didn't even smell like smoke. That's to the extent of their salvation at this time. God preserved them. God protected them. And as a result of this, this took, this took Nebuchadnezzar by surprise. It caused him to take note. And as a result, we see in Daniel chapter 28 verse, and through ver, verse 30 that he decreed that all should serve God. God of Meshach, the God of Shadrach and Abednego. 
But what did they actually do? They didn't do a very great thing. All they did was continue standing. They didn't bow. We, no doubt, consider that a very small act. Well, today, it might be that we don't say something, or we say a few words, and that causes people to take note. It might come in the form of, well, there's so-and-so. They're not going to use foul language. I know that. They'd, I've never heard them cuss. Well, those are words you don't use as a Christian. People realize this. People take note of it because it's different. To them, it's weird. It might be the case that, well, so-and-so doesn't go out drinking with us. Don't bother asking him. He's going to say no if you, if you even invite him to come along. Again, something that we would not do as Christians. People take note of that. You see, these Hebrew boys were able to stand up, continue standing as this image passed, and they continue to serve their God, just as we must today. So we must never discount the power, first and foremost, of the will of God, God's truth. Romans 1.16, it's God's power unto salvation. We must never discount how our good deeds are exhibited and the lasting effect they could have and will have on many others. I think the statistic was throughout one lifetime, we have influence over about a million people. That's a big number, about one person. And people are always complaining about, well, I can't change the world, so I might as well not even try. If every Christian on this planet changed or directly influenced or even indirectly influenced one million people, how quickly do you think we would have God back in our schools? Prayer and all these different occasions that used to once exist and now it's mocked. Sometimes it just takes us standing up and saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Or this is what we ought to be doing. That has ceased, by and large. We must also never discount that small deeds do, in fact, make a difference. Out of this whole host of people in Babylon, these three Hebrew boys stood out. They're nothing but teenagers, but they made their mark. They made an influence. And as a result, the king of Babylon decreed, We will follow Jehovah. Did you imagine President Biden making a similar statement? Not only would it be a properly formed statement, but the, the statement of saying we as a country will serve Jehovah. Could you imagine that? Now the night witches, the Noctexan, I kind of like that term. These women helped defeat the Nazis. They contributed to World War II. And they brought down an evil empire. These three Hebrew boys brought about recognition of God to Babylon. The very captors who were used to help destroy Israel for its unfaithfulness to God. And now they're being given a chance of repentance as a nation. Babylon, that is. How different are our actions today as Christians as we are to be leavening agents for good in the world that we're in, in the different roles that we occupy? One scripture before the lesson is yours. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 4. This points to how our actions, or even sometimes inactions, are noticed by others. The apostle there writes, Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. You see, you might have even run with them in that excess of riot, but as a Christian, you cease doing that. Or maybe in your time of knowing that individual or a group of people, you never did. People take note of those things. We must never forget that. Everyone has an influence. Everyone has an example. Now, unfortunately, most of us use our examples to provide evil showings of what Christians should be. 
but we must never forget our example. It does exist, whether good or bad. So if this afternoon you've allowed sin in your life as a Christian, please take this time to have that sin removed through repentance and prayer. Or if you need to be become a Christian this afternoon, now is the time to do so. Obey the gospel, ultimately being baptized as a barrel in water, contacting the blood of Christ, becoming a child of God for the very first time, a Christian and nothing else. Whatever the need is, please let it known as together we stand and sing.